Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and thank you for watching. A couple of weeks ago we had an opportunity to uh, have some Q&A time with Jody James, the developer of OB Revenge. And uh, at that time we were able to do a video pointing out what I think is a really nice Arch-based uh, distribution. And Jody is a one-man army in my opinion. He is the sole developer of OBR. I'm going to call it OBR for short. And um, after that video, he had lots of feedback from people who uh, tried out OBR, and um, I, I worked with him on a little feedback, not too much, but a little feedback, but I think he is the type of guy that really appreciates that, and he's listened, and he has, again, I don't think the guy sleeps because he's implemented lots of changes, and so the purpose of this video is to go through those changes to OBR and point out what I think are some really nice additions that take this distribution to another level. So um, really happy to, to cover this and see this. And there are still a few tweaks and things that I'll point out. Um, but uh, right now I'm really impressed with what I see. So uh, I want to also mention that uh, OB Revenge now has a Google Plus page. So if you do a search for OB Revenge, all one word, OB Revenge Linux, you'll find the Google Plus page where he has a list of all of the updates and a change log and that kind of thing. You'll also see some good interaction there uh, from from uh, OBR users. So uh, definitely check that out. So I want to step through the change log here uh, briefly. And then we'll go through those changes. That is, again, the purpose of this video is to point out those changes. So he has added an NVIDIA driver tool, and you'll see that here in this new welcome screen, which is very professional. Uh, that's an NVIDIA driver tool. I'm not going to step through that because this is an all Intel system. Well, for the most part, an Intel driver or Intel video system. So uh, stepping through this would do me no good, but it's uh, something that you could step through and it's assistance really with getting the proprietary driver set up. So a uh, great addition there. Also, he has added more Broadcom driver support by default. And um, let me just close that out. And uh, I think he will probably mention some more details on that. There's been a few requests in the Google Plus page for that. Uh, but that's certainly welcome. He has added preset layouts to the panel switcher. And that's one of the things I just love in this. So I look forward to showing you that. The Get Wallpaper tool now allows you to view and delete unwanted wallpapers uh, before it adds them to the wallpapers folder, and that was something that I had made mention of in the first video. So Jody is a guy who listens out there for sure, so a lot of these changes uh, that he has implemented, uh, I know... Uh, came directly from the feedback that he received from people trying out OBR. So that's, you know, again, that's awesome to see. He has also added a very robust audio control system to the notification panel, and I'll point that out. And hey, I want to mention too, uh, there's a Broadwell sound card in this particular system. Other Linux distributions that I put on this uh, system sometimes don't pick that up, and I you know, have to go in and configure settings and things to get sound to work uh, as it should. OBR picked that up and my uh, sound worked out of the box with OBR. So uh, awesome job there. Um, also, he has removed some of the extra packages. He said he's trimmed the fat um, on the OS and uh, I'll attest to that. The download comes in right out of gig. So uh, that's fairly light compared to a lot of other distributions out there. And he's got another tool here, the software installation tool that you know helps him to keep this thing trim but still give you the flexibility on the software side so we'll take a look at that as well some of the packages are updated and also the conky system widget uh, is installed by default and there's a few other tweaks in there that have been added i'm sure he'll update the change log as things progress here but uh, this is certainly a nice addition i'm a fan of the uh, conky widget and so to have that to have that all set up uh, by default is nice. So let's move over here again to the new welcome screen. It's very professional. Uh, it's got system update here, right there, present, so that you know that you, you know, so that you know where to go for a system update quickly. There was a small update. It was about 89 megabytes. It applied no issues, no problems whatsoever. Now the software installation tool, this is something we talked about in the first video, and I really like the idea behind this, the way this works. So you have three main categories. You have internet with a list of high quality applications. There are not a ton of applications, but the ones that are there are high quality. So you could go in and choose what you wanted there in that category, so on and so forth. Same with media. Go in and choose what you want there. And the same with Office. You're going to see LibreOffice, uh, Abbey Word, a few others. 
Once you've selected those, then with one-click install, you can install all of the software that you chose in those categories. So it's a time saver. It makes it very easy. It's simple and straightforward. And that is, this particular tool is how uh, OBR stays light. Uh, you get user choice there on what you want on your system and you have this option here as soon as you boot in to set up additional software. Now you can go beyond that with your standard uh, PMAC software manager um, and you also have access to the AUR, the Arch User Rep Repository. Um, now you also see here documentation, uh, virtual box modules and I haven't gotten into that and the new G Plus community, which was started, uh, I think Jody started that just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so you're already seeing lots of activity there. And again, you can go there to see all of the changes. And we talked about the NVIDIA driver tool. So I think it's an excellent welcome screen. And, uh, you know, if being new to a system, if Linux is fairly new to you, this is a good start. So now let's jump over here to the audio panel. And this is the first time I've seen a panel exactly like this and uh, so as you step through you have the options in this case for example my default uh, recording source here is my uh, my external mic um, so you have those settings you also have your individual volume control settings so that you can go in it's a tabbed interface so I really like that and you can go in and control things in on an individual level here as it should be so that is a nice welcome addition uh, I will point out uh, from a theming standpoint, if I didn't say this earlier, um, you know, there could be some improvement here to the icons just so that everything matches, so that there's a consistent UI look there with the theme, just in case I didn't say that earlier. Um, now let's step over into the control panel. So the control panel has been updated some, and I pointed this out in the first video, and I really like this uh, tabbed interface for your control panel simply because if you are on one category all you're going to see under that tab is anything that applies to that particular category there are other control managers in other OS's that list everything in a long list they categorize it but you still have this long list of icons here you can excuse me focus in on exactly what it is you want to control now while we're on the subject of customization you have the desktop manager settings so we can go into that and you can go in and change your theme, your icons, your font, the panel, window position. Again, I've got another video where I step through more of these details uh, from about two weeks ago if you want to check that out. But I do want to point out the changes in the panel switcher because that's one of the new additions and I love this. Um, so here we're presented with the OB panel switcher. Now I can choose uh, different panels here. I can go with Tint 2, which I'm not familiar with, the LX panel. Uh, by default you have XFCE, which is a very nice menu panel here. Uh, this is the whisker menu and gives you lots of options um, You know, to go in and configure this. For example, the categories are on the left where you know my muscle memory tells me it should be. Uh, you could move that over to the right if you so choose. So lots of options and things there. Again, I point out those details, I believe, in the first video. But I love the addition of the Mate panel. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that. Yes, Mate. You see how I drag that out? Mate. Uh, <laughs> Got to have a little fun with it. So I'm going to switch over to the Mate panel. And so now you get this application list, places list, system list, which I like. I really like this setup. I, I appreciate its simplicity and and again, it's kind of like that tabbed interface. So, uh, so you have that. Now, that was a quick and easy switch, but now he's also added a dock. So I can add a dock to the bottom here, and or I could remove that dock. And then you also see pre-configured layout. So you have Mate, OpenBox, Hybrid, and LXDE. So I'm not going to switch to anything else just for the uh, purpose of time here. I'm going to keep this on the uh, Mate panel and now let's go over to the other category system so under system you're going to have connectivity display settings uh, some of the OBR tools so uh, the auto start for uh, choosing what software to uh, start at boot those kinds of things power manager preferred applications now there is uh, something else I want to point out here under display settings 
And this is an area where I have no problem with it. It works fine. It does what it needs to do. I think if you were fairly new to Linux, this may be something that you wouldn't dig into as deep, or maybe you'd get into it and say, oh, I'm not sure about this. So this is a tool that allows you to go in and change things. For example, your resolution of your monitor. Now, I did increase, or excuse me, I changed the resolution. I decreased the resolution on this particular system for uh, recording purposes so that everything would be larger. Now, here I'm going to go into output. For example, I'm going to choose the active panel, and there's my resolution list. Now, I have changed the resolution, um, and in order for that, uh, resolution to remain at reboot, you would want to save that to a text file. Now again, this works as it should. It's simple, but it's not as intuitive as it could be for you know a new user. If someone one was fairly new to Linux, this may be a little off-putting. So I would just recommend if there are other things you could do there. Uh, in the system settings to maybe make this a little easier for a brand new user. That would be one improvement that I would see there. But again, it's saved. I've had multiple reboots and, and it comes right back into the resolution that it should. All right, and then we have software. So uh, earlier I mentioned you have the software uh, OBR software tool, which we looked at. And uh, then this is another tool here, which is the OB Revenge uh, Pac-Man Mirrorless tool. So with this tool, it will update the uh, fastest 100 mirrors for uh, the Arch uh, list of software. And then you have your standard software manager. And for those of you who are uh, running Arch-based systems, this will look familiar to you. You can go in and uh, con configure and set up the Arch user repository just like you would uh, on any other um, Arch-based system. So again, love this tabbed interface. It allows you to focus on what it is you're wanting to do within that category. So great job on the control panel there. I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So give me just a second here. I want to go through that list one more time. Um, some of the things we cannot show, such as the packages that have been updated or removed. I just don't have a list of those. Um, you know, I want to tell you too, this is a fast system. This is something that, um, you know, once you try various distributions, if you have been a distro hopper, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You get the feel for an OS pretty quickly. You don't have to spend a lot of time to tell that, hey, this thing's really fast and it's, you know, it's fluid and, and you get the feel for that pretty quickly. And that's the case here with OBR. I said it in the first video and I'm going to say it again. If you're looking for a fast, arch-based, um, light and when I say light it's it's you know not a lot of software pre-installed that kind of thing this is certainly one to put on the top of your list and in fact I am considering this as my daily driver um, you know with with some of these additions and changes that have been made um, it, it's just really a very nice distro and I'm not just saying that because Jody has become a friend and a friend to Linux Quest I'm just trying to give you my straightforward, honest opinion. Yes, there's some room for improvement and tweaks, and, and uh, I think Jody uh, looks forward to additional feedback uh, from this release, and, and I expect wholeheartedly that we will see uh, continued updates and changes here to this. So I'm just going to say overall, um, you know, certainly if you're a distro hopper and you're a, a fan of Arch-based systems, put this one on the top of your list and uh, download this and give it a try. It's a, it's a light download and, uh, you know, it installed. I believe this is using, oh, let's see. I, gosh, I should have recorded the installer. Um, it's not Cinchy. Uh, shoot, the name escapes me. Anyway, uh, the installer, it installed without issue. Uh, no problems there. It was a fairly quick install. I think I had everything installed and set up and, and running in probably 10 to 12 minutes, somewhere like that. Boot up as fast, so on and so forth. Um, so Jody, good work here. Keep up the good work. And we appreciate you sharing all this with us and appreciate all your hard work behind it. All right, that's it for now, folks, and we will catch you later.